The most successful people that I know that are on this transformational path, they move because they don't want to stay here. They don't move because they're going to get something in return from their movement. Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to talk about how to train your subconscious mind to not just create success, but to have the capacity for success. And those two things are different. And we're also going to talk about how to make a in incredibly important and critical shift into being an entrepreneur if you want to have a successful coaching business. Now most coaches who are struggling are struggling because they haven't made that shift and they're continually wrestling against and constantly bumping up against their own subconscious mind limitations. So if you want to free yourself from those subconscious limitations, watch this whole video, take in this entire conversation, probably listen to it a couple times because it's really deep and it is the thing that's going to move the needle for you in your business. This video right here, this concept is so, so critical and it's not what most people are familiar with or it's not what most people are doing. I'm going to dive into it here in a moment, but at a, at a higher conceptual level, most people just misunderstand the process of growth. They just misunderstand the requirements. So people misunderstand the signs of what growth looks like and what transformation looks like and what success really in, in the form of, you know, what it really takes to go after our bigger goals and our bigger dreams. And so our mind is conditioned in a way to believe that success is like this linear pattern, that success is a formula and that you follow these steps and then you get the response or you get the results. And it's not the way it works. The mind is a computer, essentially. The way the intellect works is a computer and computers follow formulas. The formula says, I do something, I get something. That's the intellectual exchange. I call it the transactional mindset. The transactional mindset is completely different than the transformational mindset. The transactional mindset expects results based on a formula of actions. We see this in our jobs, right? I do a job, I work for eight hours, I work for 40 hours a week, I work for X number of hours per month, and I get paid a certain dollar amount based on those hours that I've worked. Or I get paid a certain amount of what I produce, if you've got some kind of commission or something, right? But the process of transformation doesn't work transactionally. It's not this even exchange. I give you something, you give me something. I give you something, you give me something. But the intellect of our brain expects the formula to work all the time and it expects to be able to predict what the results will be. So not only does it expect this linear transaction, but it expects to be able to predict the results. And then it says, I won't give the actions unless I know I'm going to get the results. So yeah, I'll go ahead and commit to the things that are gonna change my life if you can guarantee and predict what that path is gonna look like and what those results are going to be. And that's the fundamental conflict that people have in personal development. They're expecting their transformation to work like a transaction. And it never has and it never will. We have to understand that the intellect is fantastic at what it's fantastic at. And it's horrible at what it's horrible at. We got to keep the intellect in its lane. When the intellect takes over and tries to predict what our transformation is going to look like, we've got the wrong entity running the show. And when the intellect is involved saying, this is what I want my transformation to look like, this is what I want to experience, we're also using the wrong fuel because the intellect doesn't have the capability to fuel the heart. It just doesn't have the capability, it's a computer. The transactional mindset is the expected guarantee of results based on the investment. So I'm going to invest this number of hours, I'm going to invest this amount of money, I'm going to invest this amount of energy, and I better get that back, whatever it is that we're expecting to get back. But I'm telling you, Number one, that's not the way the path operates. But number two, you don't want to get back the expectations of your intellect anyway. So when your expectations are fulfilled and the expectations are from your intellect, that's the worst thing that could happen. 
Why? Because you're making a prediction based on your intellectual experience now. And you don't want now to just be continued in the future. You want something better than now. And the intellect has been the director of your current now. So don't use the director of your now to build something bigger than now. Don't use the director of your current reality to figure out how to expand your current reality. It can't do that because it created what you currently have that you're trying to get away from. So the worst thing that can happen in my experience in terms of growth is for your expectations to be met on the path of transformation. And why do most of us not take the actions? Because we're afraid that our expectations won't be met. So listen to this. Most of us don't take actions because we're afraid that what we want won't be met. But I just told you, if what you want is met, that's the worst thing that could happen to you. That's why the unconscious mind and the conscious mind are at odds with each other so often. And that's why so many people are stuck in their current circumstances because they're trying to use fuel from a place in the, un in the intellectual mind that the fuel doesn't belong and they're trying to understand the process of transformation with an entity that not only can't understand it, but is designed to prevent it. Your intellectual computer driven mind is not designed to expand your current reality. It's designed to keep you safe in your current reality. So we need to stop giving it a vote. We need to stop putting it in the driver's seat. So when we're caught up in this transactional, expectational mindset, when that's the mode that our brain is in, we're never going to grow. What we have to understand is in the transformational game, your results don't come from the investment in a transactional way. You don't invest something and then know what results are gonna come. It's not the way it works and it's not even. What most people are doing is not only trying to transform with a transactional mindset or a transactional expectation, but they're trying to flip the scales toward their comfort. So most people are trying to get maximum results with minimum effort, maximum returns on minimum investment. And that's because the mind's in charge. The soul does not expect maximum returns on minimum effort. The soul is okay with maximum investment and minimum returns. And when you make that shift and you commit to maximum investment in time, in energy, and in money, then those returns can increase, but they will be lagging behind. You don't punch a time clock. You don't say, I put my eight hours in, give me my returns. You don't do that in the road of transformation. You don't do that when your purpose is at stake. It takes a lot of investment. And here's the thing, you'll never know really where it's gonna come from and you'll never know how much. So you have to have faith in the process of transformation. You have to surrender your desire to follow the rules of your intellect. In order to get the returns that you want, you have to almost with reckless abandon invest and invest and invest your time, your energy, your money into movement. That's the key, into movement. The most successful people that I know that are on this transformational path, they move because they don't want to stay here. They don't move because they're going to get something in return from their movement. That shift right there will make everything change in your life. If you're expecting something to happen because of the movement that you give, because the investment that you put in, if you're expecting something to happen, then when it doesn't happen or when it doesn't happen the way you want it to happen, then there's no reason to keep moving because the reward for the movement wasn't fulfilled. I want your reward for the movement to be movement. When the reward for the movement is to get off of where you are right now, then it doesn't matter if you get the returns or not, because that's not why you're moving. You're moving because you can't stay here. You have to be willing to say, this stops now. That kind of declaration is what is going to propel you to get into the motion that you need to get into. But if you don't have that 
declaration of this must stop now, then you probably won't have the fuel to go for the sake of leaving this. Hopefully this is landing for you. If your fuel is based on receiving something in the future, then you taking action doesn't fulfill the reason for the action. Therefore, you got to wait for something to come back to you. But if you say this stops now, I don't know what my recipe is, but it cannot contain all of my current ingredients. So I need to change at least one thing and take action now. That comes from the declaration that this will not continue. Now this could be a massive declaration, like the, the, the level of poverty or the level of network that you have all around you or the weight that you're carrying on your body. It could be at an extreme level of discomfort and you're going to say, I can't continue like that anymore. But you don't have to be in an extreme level of discomfort or an extreme level of lack to make that same kind of declaration. Your life might be pretty good, but you're tired of pretty good because you want to experience great. So it doesn't matter where you're going from and what you're pursuing. What matters is that you make a declaration. This right here, and I keep pointing down, you can't see my feet, but this right here is not where I'm going to stay. So anything that produces movement off of this right here is progress. See, most of us don't want to move until we know the exact path that's going to take us to the exact location that we're hoping to go to. It's impossible to know that path. And even if you did know that path and got it right, you would get it wrong because your intellect doesn't have the capacity to understand where your soul wants to go. It doesn't have the capacity. Instead of expecting the results to come meet you where you are, you need to break your current capacity because the results that we are searching for, the results that we're seeking are all around us. But most of us are still hidden in our current comfort zone, protected by the walls that we've been building for years and years and years. And the results that we're wanting are on the other side of the walls. That's why we don't access them. It's because we can't access them from inside the walls. And what most people are doing is just trying to get the results to, to jump over the walls. You need to break the current capacity of your container. So if your container, imagine your container is a fishbowl. That fishbowl can only have a certain amount of growth. You can only grow to a certain amount of wealth. You can only grow to a certain amount of love. You can only grow to a certain amount of network around you. You can only grow to a certain amount in the capacity of your current container. And what most people are doing because they don't want the container to break because we don't like the idea of being disrupted. We don't like the idea of these walls that have been protecting us our whole life coming down. That's the intellect in charge. We built these walls for protection. We are certainly not going to intentionally break them, intentionally allow these walls to come down that have been protecting us for so long. So we don't like the idea of our walls of protection coming down. And because of that, we don't want to break our current container. So we just hope that the results that we're looking for, the purpose that we're looking for, everything that we want to expand into will come meet us inside of our current container. But understand the only way it can do it is if it shrinks down to the capacity of your current container. And your purpose will not shrink down into the capacity of your current container. Your next chapter is called your next chapter because this chapter has to end before that one can start. So instead of continually hoping and expecting that the next chapter will fit itself into the current comfortable chapter, you've got to be willing to end this one. And that commitment comes first. The first thing you have to do to be able to receive what's next for you, if it's bigger than what you can currently contain, is to expand the capacity of what you can currently contain. So if you right now have the capacity to hold this much, but you want to increase your results to twice as much as what you're holding right now in any area of life or all areas of life, you need to break the current container and increase your capacity to double. Otherwise you can't hold 
what's available to you. And see, one of the things that our unconscious mind does is protect us from things we can't currently handle. So we get really frustrated because we think if we could just have a little bit more money, if I could just have a little bit more luck, if I could just have a little bit more success, but our unconscious mind actually knows what we can handle. And it is not going to overload us with things that we can't handle because that's actually worse than being stuck in the container. But in order to be stuck in the container or in order to break out of the container, we have to be willing to go all in. In order to break out of our current container, we have to be willing to give maximum investment and not expect any results because we're investing for the sake of moving. We're moving for the sake of getting away from what no longer serves us. That's the fuel. And when we're moving for the sake of moving, the results start to catch up to us. The results start to chase us down. And when we're moving for the sake of moving, when we're open to the idea of transformation rather than stuffing our dreams into transactions, the results that chase us down based on that kind of unconditional commitment to moving are so far beyond our current capacity to understand. That's why we don't want to use our current intellectual understanding to predict our future. The future that's waiting for us, the future that's available to us is way bigger than we can currently comprehend with the intellect that built our comfort zone that we're in right now. So you must be willing to explode out of where you are right now. You must be willing to break down whatever's holding you in right now. You must be willing to expand your capacity first before expecting your results. And then everything becomes a self-fulfilling cycle where movement is the reason to move. And as you move, you get inspired to keep moving. Most of our commitment is conditional upon the results that we're expecting to come back to us. That's the transactional mindset. I will move as long as I get something back in return. Transformation is not a transaction. I will move as long as I get back something in return is as temporary and as shallow as it gets. But that's where most people are stuck. And if they don't get the result or they're not guaranteed to get the result, well then they're not gonna move. So their commitment is conditional upon getting the results that are unknowable, unpredictable, and can't be expected. So the things that so many people are using as the condition for movement are literally, and I mean literally, in every single way, their conditions are impossible. So how far are you gonna go when you're expecting a condition to be met that is unmeetable? When you're expecting to see something that is unseeable? When you're expecting to know something that is unknowable? It's just because we're using the wrong entity, we're put the wrong thing in control. So our soul actually has no problem committing to moving because our soul wants growth. Our soul wants to know what we're made of. Our soul loves the challenge of expanding. Our intellect is terrified by it, but our soul craves it. So allow your soul to fuel the movement for the sake of expansion, the movement for the sake of growth, the movement for the sake of transformation. And then what is waiting for you on the other side of your current container that you can't see through right now will blow your mind. But your mind can't be blown until the container that you're currently in is blown up. That comes first. In the transformation game, the current container gets destroyed first before the next chapter can get built. So we need to deconstruct the current walls before we can reconstruct what's waiting for us. In other words, we need to break the chains from our past in order to experience the freedom in our future. Oh, that was a lot, right? Hopefully that really landed for you. Now, if you like this video, check out that video right there. It's all about the five key components you need to understand about creating high impact transformational coaching packages. So the first consideration is what's your coaching framework? 